Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mengs, and I welcome you guys to another Fire Emblem Fates character spotlights. In the last spotlight, I asked you what character you want to see me cover, and an overwhelming amount of voices cried out in unison for one character in particular. Well, your wish is my command, so today we take a look at the one and only Niles. Do you have any idea what you're getting into? I sure hope not. Niles is a character with a tragic backstory. Abandoned by his parents at a very young age, he was forced to fend for himself on the streets as a thief. For years, he survived off stealing, pillaging, and robbing others. He lost his right eye in a fight with another thug, hence why he wears his eye patch. When Niles got older, he ended up joining a criminal gang of rogues living in his area, and this was the closest he ever came to knowing real family. One evening, during an attempt to plunder a Norian palace, Niles and his gang were led into a trap laid by Leo, the Prince of Nor. In order to escape, the criminal gang used Niles as a scapegoat and abandoned him, escaping justice and putting the blame on him in the process. When Niles realized he had been betrayed by his only friends, he immediately surrendered upon seeing Leo and begged for the prince to end his life. Leo, however, saw something special in Niles on that day, and immediately made the decision to make him one of his retainers. Ever since, Niles has served Leo with extreme loyalty, though he never quite abandoned his roguish ways. Niles is a handsome, athletic man of medium height and build. His ruffled hair is a brown whitish in color, and he wears a black eye patch with a shuriken embroidery over his right blue eye. His attire consists mostly of darkly colored leather with a tunic, cloak, and high boots. He carries a seemingly expensive necklace around his neck, and is well dressed for someone pretending to be a simple scoundrel. Niall's birthday is on the 22nd of April, and out of everyone in Corin's army, he apparently enjoys looking at the moon the most. You seem nervous. Was this meant to be a date? Niles is one of the more complicated personalities among Corin's army. At first glance, he appears like a cold-hearted sadist, taking pleasure in tormenting and harassing others. He seemingly derives pleasure from acting like a total piece of shit towards anyone he is conversing with, but we learn through some of his support conversations that this is actually something he does on purpose to test people. This behavior most likely stems from distrust and insecurity on Niles' behalf, as he feels the need to poke around with someone's emotions before deciding to invest himself in them. He most likely wishes to see if his target is worth the conversation, and if they are able to handle him. While commonly described as evil, black-hearted, wicked and cruel, Niles is actually far from either of these things. He does have a soft spot that he usually only reveals at the end of his support conversations, and it is made blatantly obvious that he actually cares quite a bit about the people around him, only that he chooses to hide it behind a mask of impudence and profanity. This behavior most likely stems from his fear of getting hurt and rejected, as a result of being abandoned as a child, both by his parents and his friends. Niles is also quite the sadist, expressing his love for pain and domination quite frequently. He utilizes his extravagant looks, wild demeanor, and flamboyant sexuality as a shield to distract others away from his true self. However, we do learn that Niles is actually bisexual, and is capable of marrying a male Corin if they attain an S-rank support. Niles joins you in Chapter 8 of Conquests and Chapter 17 of Revelations. In Conquest, he is your only option for a thief for quite some time, whereas in Revelations you have a bit more choice in who you want to use. In Conquests, Niles is also one of your only available bow users for a very long time, unless you reclass someone like Mosu or capture a generic archer using your prison. In fact, Conquest does not give you any archers or snipers at all, so Niles may be your only bow user for a majority of the game, making him sort of a must-use character, at least for some time. As a unit, Niles has excellent speed and a surprisingly high magic and resistance growth for a physical unit. This makes him an adept mage killer, even though bows have a weapon triangle disadvantage against tomes in this game. In the chapter where Niles joins, most of the enemy mages can barely hurt him, even on hard and lunatic difficulty, while he can easily one-round them in return. 
Niles has decent hit points, strength, and skill, but his main weakness is his low luck and defense, making him somewhat of a glass cannon that cannot survive sustained fighting on the front lines. Taking on more than one or two physical enemies at once during the enemy phase can be quite risky, and he can very quickly fall victim to enemy dual strikes, so be very careful when positioning him. Niles' personal skill is Kidnap, and if you played Tracia 776, you might be a little familiar with how it works. If you played Birthright, this is the exact same skill as Orochi has. You need to have a prison in your base to take advantage of this skill. Once you have, you will get the option to capture a unit with Niles you would otherwise be able to kill. Using the capture command reduces Niles' hit chance by 10% and disables special skills like Sol, Astra, and Luna from proccing. If you succeed, you will capture the unit in your prison. The unit will retain all stats and skills, and even has growth rates, but won't retain any of its original gear. You can capture most generic goons and even some bosses. Once captured, you can visit them in your base and have one of your units either threaten or bribe them into joining your army. If successful, the unit joins you and acts just like an Einherjar unit, being playable but having no dialogue, special lines or support conversations. Some of the bosses you can capture are extremely decent units, particularly the boss of Chapter 9 in Conquest, which can make the dreaded Chapter 10 a lot easier, so take advantage of the skill as much as possible. Niles can promote to an adventurer or a bow knight. As an adventurer, he gains access to staves, which in combination with his average magic can allow him to assist a little bit in the healing department. Bow knight gives him a horse and access to swords. Either option is completely viable, and all it really comes down to is player preference. If you have to lack staff users on your team, you should go with adventure. But if you want more mounted utility or more sword users, you should go with bow knight. There is no right or wrong answer here. Using a heart seal, Niles can class change to a dark mage, which can be a viable option if you find Odin too slow or Nyx too frail, but honestly, I suggest you keep him as a space class. I don't see Niles bringing anything to the table that the other dark mages won't, and he's much better at wielding bows anyway. Obtaining the right equipment can make a big difference for Niles' utility. If he can get a hold of a Shining Bow, a bow that targets resistance and can fire from both 1 and 2 range, he becomes an extremely versatile and powerful unit. Since his magic will be average, he can inflict great damage on tanky enemies with high defense and low resistance, such as generals. The dual bow, which reverses the weapon triangle, also makes him even better at hunting mages, since he will, in addition to his sky-high resistance, also have weapon triangle advantage against his foes. Once Niles achieves an S-rank support with anyone but the male avatar, he will become the father of Nina the Outlaw. Nina is very similar to Niles in almost every single aspect gameplay-wise, sharing his class as well as similar growth rates, so pair Niles up with the appropriate waifu depending on what role you want her to fill. It should be worth noting that if Niles S-ranks with a male Corin, this will be a quite devastating pairing in terms of children, as not only will you not be able to get Nina, but you will also miss out on Corin's daughter, Kana. While it may be fun to unlock the only gay pairing in the game, this sadly also deprives you of two children characters, so keep this in mind and consider if it is worth it. At the end of the day, Nas is a fantastic unit. In Conquest, he is almost essential, while in Revelations, he is a bit more of an optional character. Regardless of what route you pick, Nas is a very situationally useful, albeit slightly squishy character that will require some attention to be good, but he will without a doubt be a stellar mage killer and a great utility unit that will serve you well throughout the game. Should you use this handsome devil? Oh, yes! Thank you for watching this character spotlight. If you want to watch more spotlights, you can click the link on the screen to visit my playlists, and there you will find all the previous spotlights I've done. If there is a specific character you'd like to see me cover in a future spotlight, let me know in the comment section below. If you found this particular spotlight entertaining, please give this video a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel a lot, and if you want to be updated whenever I release future videos, you can subscribe. As always, my name is Min Manx, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.